are looking at Otto Dix's painting, it's a portrait of Sylvia von Harden, and it's from 1926. Who was Sylvia von Harden? Sylvia von Harden was a fantastic, fabulous figure who was not actually a journalist, even though the title says that she's a journalist. She was less of a journalist, but actually a poet um, and a short story writer who worked in Germany. And this shows her in the Romanisches Café in Berlin, which was a huge hangout for all of the cool avant-garde artists and writers and poets of the 1920s. So Sylvia von Harden is pictured here in this little corner where she would have hung out at a little café table. She was an avant-garde kind of neue Frau, um, and she was friendly with various uh, artists and poets and writers of the era. So Neue Frau is the new woman in Germany in the early 20th century, and we're in between the Great War and World War II here. And the new woman is that the, the woman in the public sphere who goes out and works. She has close cropped hair, I see, which There's... makes her rather androgynous. Her mm -hmm. hands are very large. Uh, does, do these things have to do with representing the new woman in, in a work of art, perhaps? It does. It has to do with the new woman in general, but it also has to do with Otto Dix's style of portraiture. Um, one thing that Otto Dix was famed for was making his sitters quite ugly and quite unattractive. Um, Sylvia von Harden does look like this in real life, but not to quite the extent that Dix uh, shows her. So that um, things like her hair, she did have a close cropped haircut. And in Germany, this cut had a very funny specific name called the Bubikoff, um, which was in style um, all throughout the 20s. She did have a sort of androgynous appearance. And this dress is actually based on a dress that she actually wore. Um, and so this is, it, it does have a lot of basis in reality, but things like her hands, he elongates and sort of creates these immense hands. Um, and I think that has a lot to do with sort of deflection and kind of placement. It sort of draws your attention to things like her, the area where her breast should be, which because she's such an androgynous figure, she doesn't really have any. She's wearing this very kind of geometric pattern dress. Um, that hides any kind of feminine uh, figure that she might have. Um, she's covered up. I mean, it even has a turtleneck, so we don't even get to see her neck. Uh, and then you see the other hand kind of draped across her lap, covering her up. But there are other elements that you might be able to see that signal different things. In the body? If you look, actually, it's great detail, the sagging stocking. Oh, yes. Um, you can kind of see, and that's a really great moment of realism that, that yeah. Dix captures. You don't want to have your stockings be shown as sagging. It sort of implies a kind of messiness. She doesn't seem to have a very polished kind of air about her. But on the other hand, it kind of gives her this sort of subversive quality. So she's sitting there and she's looking out and she has a monocle even. I mean, she has these, these particular features, all of these little accessories that pinpoint her as a particular kind of woman. The sagging stocking, the large hands, um, the monocle, which highlights the kind of sight and gaze that a new woman might have. Um, and then she has cigarettes. Why is she smoking in a public place? It's all kind of building a particular sort of identity for this character, and Dix was really talented at doing that in his painting. The pattern dress seems to really emphasize a, a sense of surface and flatness instead of her body. Her mm -hmm. neck seems very cylindrical and almost mechanical, it seems, rather than a sort of human organic form as well. I think one of the things that I like about this painting too is the way that Dix um, uses these kind of geometric sort of areas and shapes and, and throws it into contrast with, if you see behind her, she's sitting on this really ornately patterned chair. So those kind of curves are, are more feminine than her body is, which I think is a great kind of uh, comment to make. And then, you know, there's the circle of her monocle and this is the circle of the marble table, the circle of the glass, um, which has a very particular kind of cocktail in it that was popular at the time. Time. So those things, and then things that are longer and flatter, like her body, which really should be the least flat, um, you know, if you're thinking about what bodies look like. Are, are bodies, you know, round and sort of curvaceous and sensual things, or are they kind of desexualized, um, androgenized forms, which Dix does here. And we should probably contextualize this in terms of the new objectivity, or Neue Sachlichkeit. Yes, Sachlichkeit. Was that good? Yes. Which was occurring at this time, a, a movement in between the wars, uh, which went back to a, a bit more of a figural style, a bit more naturalism, relatively more naturalistic than what one might be familiar with in terms of Kirchner or German Expressionism mm -hmm. or Kandinsky, of course. Other artists were working in Germany at the time. Why going back to this style, which is a bit more naturalistic? 
Well, I think that the realism is, uh, there, there are many things that are important about it at this time, but this is 1926. There's this sort of general sense in Germany, uh, and this is going on in other countries in Europe as well, of kind of a return to order, kind of looking back at tradition, a kind of sense that they wanted to create something new, but they wanted it to have a particular kind of meaning and a rootedness in something that was very German. And so Otto Dix is really looking back to traditions of portraiture in Germany. He looks back to Holbein, who creates, you know, incredibly important portraits and sort of, you know, bringing out that kind of German quality. Um, Holman's hyper-naturalistic, yes. isn't he? Yes, he is hyper-naturalistic. And it, what, it, what he does is he takes naturalism and realism and he sort of lifts it to another level where it almost is caricature. So it kind of falls between that. And a lot of Neue Sachlichkeit painters did that, um, a kind of photographic realism almost, but also taken to an extreme. That's interesting that it, it's characterized as a kind of call to order or a return to order while we're representing uh, someone who is apparently overturning some mm -hmm. very uh, long-standing gendered hierarchies and ordered ways of thinking about men and women as very separate. The new woman, particularly as it's embodied here by Sylvia, seems to be confounding those categories rather than reveling in how neat and ordered they are. Well, she's definitely about sort of overturning things and, you know, even her, ma her name is actually made up. It's a pseudonym, and she changed her name when she started her writing career. And you know, she's not. It's a, she's not a huge, very popular writer, but she's one of many poets and writers who are working on different pieces that are published in small journals um, that you know very small kind of audiences have read. Uh, but she's definitely overturning different kinds of cultural stereotypes and gender stereotypes, and and kind of in that space of subversion in the cafe culture of Germany at the time. What did Dix's sitters think about the fact that he liked to make people ugly? Did, well, did that bother them? Um, you know, sometimes it did. A lot of times it was almost like a privilege to be painted by Dix and portrayed in this particularly uh -huh. ugly kind of way. But one uh, one or two sitters did have a problem with it. Um, and, and depending on, you know, he was commissioned by um, sitters because he was so well known. And, and at this point in 26, he's very well known for his painting style. But earlier than that, some of his more wealthy business clients um, did not particularly like the way that they were painted. Sylvia van Harden, as far as I know, uh, did love the way that this painting worked. And she uh, even sat with it. It's at the Pompidou Center now. And in the 60s, uh, she even sat and took a photograph, had a photograph taken of herself in front of the portrait. And you can see even that at that point that she still sort of looks a little bit like the figure in it. I just think it's a great portrait. Me too. <laughs>